let's talk about photocells. So a photo cell, a lot of you apprentices may end up doing service work or shoot, I mean, even just during construction, trying to get some parking lot lighting on, or you might have something outdoor, landscape lighting, stuff like that. There's a million different reasons why you might have a photo cell. And when I was an apprentice, I always wanted to know like, how does it actually work? Why is there a red wire? You know, like, what is it? What is it actually doing? So how this photo cell works is we're gonna have incoming power um, from our source, right? So we could even just say this is from a panel, but ultimately it's going out to the transformer. That's why I draw it like that. So we have a complete circuit from black all the way through to white. That complete circuit is what we can think of as our control circuit, just like we would have on a relay or a contactor. The control circuit can energize and change the state. So if something is normally closed, meaning this, the, the black and the red on this are always touching, when you energize, it opens them. Or if something is normally open, it means that like from the factory off the shelf, it's normally an open switch. And when you send current on a control circuit, it closes the circuit. So in this situation, when you pull a photo cell off the shelf, it's in a normally closed state. It's once you add a circuit to it that it opens the state. So once we hook this thing up, uh, it's going to be energized and it's gonna open things up. So as the photons are coming in, uh, it's staying open. And then when the photons go away, it goes back to its normally closed state, like you just bought it off the shelf. So energizing the coil on this, and it's not even really a coil. Again, it's a variable resistor, but if, if you uh, energize it, it's gonna keep it open so that current can't flow through the switch. And then once that circuit goes away, once there's no more photons coming in to change the variability of that resistor, uh, it's gonna close back. So it just goes to show we've got a complete circuit that's going to what we can think of as our coil circuit or our control circuit. Uh, we have a normally closed situation. So uh, it's nighttime, so it doesn't really matter. No current's gonna be flowing through it. But during the day, once there's photons that are hitting this, it's actually gonna open that circuit back up so it can't turn on. And then once it closes again at night because there's no more photon activity and it's just going back to the way that it was when you bought it, you're gonna have current that can flow. The completed circuit is gonna allow it to change states which connects the black side to the red side and it allows current to flow through this entire thing. So now you have this as your circuit, just all the way around. Compare that to a regular light switch we obviously don't need a neutral going to a light switch. There's nowhere for it to go unless we got some kind of fancy lighting control, Lutron sort of thing, and it needs a neutral to power it. But the same circuit, we just have a neutral that goes all the way through, through the bulb. We've got our leg that comes back over the switch. And then when we close that switch, now we've got a complete loop where we've got current that can flow through the whole entire thing and make a loop. So essentially a photocell is just a switch. It's just a controlled switch. It's, it's a, um, a way that we can use automatic means for it to do whatever it's gonna do rather than manually us having to go up and actually control stuff. Photons are just little balls of light essentially. They're little packets of electromagnetic energy. They have a certain amount of energy. So when they come in, they can interact with a circuit because circuits also are able to interact with photons with electromagnetic energy. So as photons come in here, there's a resistor inside of this and it's a resistor that can, uh, the resistance can be changed. So when electrons come into it, it will change its resistance. If there's too much resistance, like a whole bunch of resistance, current can't flow through this thing. If there's very little or almost no resistance, current's gonna flow through it just fine. So it's in a state during the day which there's so much resistance that it will not allow electron flow. When the photons come in, they change the amount of resistance in the circuit. And when you take those photons away, it's able to change states because it again, it changes the state of the resistivity of that resistor. So it basically changes state 
when it senses there's no more photons and it closes the circuit, allowing current to flow through. When it senses photons, it changes the state and adds a whole bunch more resistance until it clicks over and it opens up the circuit. So during the day when there's all these photons coming in, it's not turning on. So it's just a variable resistor on the inside of these. And usually if you have a contactor, it's gonna be normally open most of the time, meaning that the control circuit is not telling all of the other circuits to close to send power through all of those conductors you have to send control voltage through to tell it to close that contactor to connect all of the circuits that are going through the contactor and turn dozens of lights on, right? Like a normal contactor like this, I can send it control voltage and boom, as soon as I do that, all of these contacts are gonna close on the top. Similar thing to this, this thing right here. Like you could have all of your incoming, a whole bunch of different circuits coming in one side and then going out into the field. But the way that you get each one of them to close is you bump it with a separate circuit, with a control circuit. You can either flip a switch that sends power to it, turn the switch off. You could put a photo cell outside somewhere and allow this to be the switch. So it's, you know, in one state during the day, it's not closing the circuit. But at night, when the photons are no longer present, it allows that circuit to close and it sends current through the contactor and turns all the lights on. These are used in commercial lighting like crazy, all parking lot lighting and wall packs, landscape lighting, stuff like that. Most of it is using um, a photo cell to control it unless they've got some kind of like lighting control building management system where they might have a schedule where things turn on. That's also possible. But essentially what is happening is that you have an open circuit or an open state of this thing during the day and then when the photons go away, it allows this thing to close and you'll actually hear a click in these things when it is no longer receiving that photon energy. Now, a couple things about photocells. They have a lot of different ratings. This one that's vast, fastly coming apart in my hand, not because it's broken, um, because it's brand new out of the box. Oh no, it actually is broken. Brand new out of the box, Lowe's. Um, this one I call a knuckle style. So this one actually bends. So if you're ever sitting like on a, a, a box or you've like drilled this into something, you have the ability to kind of move it however you need to because usually with a building you got four sides, north, south, east, west, sun's coming up in the east, going down in the west. So you always wanna make sure that this thing is able to get equal sunlight during all times of day. If you point it north, it's only gonna get sunlight up until here. So the rest of the day, it's not gonna have it. So this thing might not actually turn on and off when you want it to, especially if it's like underneath a service panel or something or behind a bush and it's tucked in. You gotta make sure that this thing can see light and see dark and it's not influenced by anything else. So the benefit of having this is I usually do mine due east or due west. That way I've got the whole horizon of uh, sunlight to, to affect this thing. And usually when I want lights to turn off, it's like they've been on all night and right when the sun comes up, I want all the lights in the entire parking lot to go off. And I don't want them coming on. I want them all day long, photons hitting this thing, not telling it to turn off. And when that sun starts to go down and it starts getting dark, that's when I want it to turn back on. So we've got this little like knuckle style that you can use. We've got just the normal style that sticks like straight up out of a box. And then we've got this other style that can fit inside of stuff. So a lot of times um, we would, doing commercial lighting, sometimes you just customize a light fixture, you pop a hole into it so you can fit something like this through it so it'll actually go inside of a fixture. And then you don't have this big bulky thing sticking outside of a light fixture. Sometimes too, we'll just have like a bell box, right? Like some kind of weatherproof box. You got a weatherproof ring on here and then this thing sticks through there and it looks all nice and pretty. There's a little uh, ring on, on here that's supposed to screw it in place. But this style's great too. Um, the one thing about photo cells is you gotta make sure that you watch the ratings on them. There are some photo cells that are rated for like 208 volt. Some of them are rated for 277 lighting. Some of them are only rated 120. So if you pass 277 through a 120 photo cell, you're gonna fry that thing. So make sure that you're checking the ratings on all of them. Now, one crappy thing about photocells is they go out. Just like GFCIs end up getting, you know, moisture inside of them or they get corroded or exposed to elements, they just go bad. So you're constantly replacing GFIs every couple of years. Photocells are the same thing. Um, I would say photocells, GFCIs, and motion sensors are probably the three things that go out 
like reliably every couple of years. Uh, motion sensors seem like they're getting a lot better. I'm not talking about like commercial motion sensors, room sensors, that stuff's like really expensive and like well-designed. Um, but it, you know, like typical little floodlights that you're gonna hang out in your soffit, a lot of times the motion uh, sensors after like a year, you got cats running by and they're not detecting anything. You're like walking out right now. I can walk out my garage and like point at mine and I'm, it's right here. And I'm just like, yo, yo, and it doesn't come on. And then I'll get like 70 feet away and it's like, oh, there's something. <laughs> so the eyes on these can get dirty with rain with, you know, stuff. Uh, it can just get the, like discolor the lens so the lens doesn't see as well anymore. Also, as weather proof and rain tight as these things seem, you're, there's always gonna be water and moisture that builds up and gets inside of this thing, just the nature of condensation. Um, so a lot of times they'll go bad inside. So when you have a photo cell outside that you need to test and figure out whether it's good or bad because you got all these parking lots, lights that won't go on, the quickest thing that I do is I take some black electrical tape, not colored electrical tape, black. And I will put black tape over this three times to make sure it's super dark. And I make sure I cover the tops, the sides, everything. I make sure there's no way any possible light can get into it. And then I'll sit there for, I don't know, maybe like 30 seconds. Within 30 seconds, this thing should be able to change and sense the photons no longer coming in and it'll close that circuit and the lights will come on. If it doesn't, then you know you have a bad photo cell. You could also test with your multimeter to see if in a closed state, sometimes you gotta leave it on for like 10 minutes. It sucks because these things just get old and takes them a while to change over. But you can test with your multimeter to see whether or not you're getting 120 between black and white. And if you are, your control circuit's good. But then if you're testing between red and white and you're not getting anything, then you know that it's not good. So you can always take the wire nuts off of these because you're gonna have the outgoing leg that goes out to the lights and you're gonna have the incoming power. So you could just take this thing completely out of the equation, touch your incoming power to your switch leg, put wire nut on them and see all the lights come on. That's another way that you can tell, like it's not a problem with a breaker or a relay contactor. It's not a problem with lights. It's not a break in a wire somewhere. So if I'm ever troubleshooting and I'm like trying to figure out if one of these things work, usually it's the problem, <laughs> right? So like normally it's not all the other things that could go wrong, it's usually this. Um, but just to verify, usually I'll just take the wire nuts off, direct wire everything, watch all the lights come on and be like, all right, cool, bad photo cell. Take a new one in, replace the wires, and then within a couple minutes of blinding it, they come right on. So pretty easy thing to do, pretty cheap fix as well. Um, if you use like orange tape and try to do this, I find a lot of times, eventually it'll turn off like 20, 30 minutes it might take. Even brown tape I've messed around with. Brown takes forever as well. Um, so you really gotta make it dark. Some people have taken like boxes and they'll put like a little box over it, but it still allows a little bit of light to come through underneath the box. So you just wanna completely blind the photo cell anytime you're trying to test um, to see whether or not something will come on. So I hope that learned you some things about some photo cells, gave you some value. Please leave some comments below. Let me know if you guys want any more videos around lighting, specifically contactors, anything like that. Love you crazy people, and I'll see you in the next one.